Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class. And in today's video, I will be sharing a really fun napkin die cutting technique that gives your dies this beautiful dimension and sort of puffy look to them. And I have to say, I did not come up with this technique myself at all. And I'm going to link to the tutorial that I found down in the YouTube description box below. So be sure to check that out. I want to give credit where credit is due. It is not my technique at all. I also wanted to mention I will have a full supply list at the very end of the video, including everything that I'm using today, colors, ink, stamps, dyes, everything. And I will be doing my painting today using the Arteza 12 watercolor half pens, and they're 15 miniature brushes, and I really love this brush set actually. And the kind folks at Arteza do have a coupon code for you if you're interested in trying out anything um, from their line, and that also will be down in the YouTube description box below. So these uh, 12 watercolor half pans came with this little swatch sheet so I'm just trying out the colors here and painting in the swatch sheet using these paint brushes. I really like that the colors are very vibrant. You can use uh, the sort of the pan or the set that they come in to mix colors on the non-pore surface once you open up the tin and I just think they're a really handy set. I love sets of watercolors like these that are not too overwhelming with lots and lots of color choices because you can always mix them together and they're easy for on the go. Or if you're like me, sometimes I just stamp a lot of things in advance and take them with me and I can just grab this little watercolor kit and be ready to color. So there's a look at my quickly painted in colors that are included in this set and I will be using them as I do my watercoloring today with this napkin die cutting technique. So the dies that I am using are from our new creative die set 51-610 Hydrangea and this is a really fun set to work with. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can die cut this and use it. So to do this napkin die cutting technique you want just really cheap napkins and fold them in half and then put a piece of cardstock underneath and just run them through with your die just as you would with any other die cutting and that tutorial I'm linking down below in the description box will show you all of that step by step in photos and then when you go to paint these everything just kind of flattens and sticks together until you add the water of the paints and the watercolors and then the napkin part starts to puff up and you get this really beautiful dimension and texture and I think it gives a very natural look. Now I'm using some pretty intricate dies here and so the effect is a little more subtle but I still think it's so beautiful and it's another really fun way to use your dies. You could even do this with say a border die or a frame die and have like sort of a puffy frame going around the end edge of your image. There's just so many different ways to use this. Now if you, I did find I had a few places where the napkin was kind of separating from the cardstock below and I just put like a tiny little dot of glue underneath there to hold it when I was painting. Now with this die set you get the two layers, the base layer and then this detailed layer that matches up and fits perfectly over the top. So I wanted this to be darker so I added a couple of layers onto it. Now on the stem and the leaves portion, I think you can see sort of that puffing textural effect a little bit more um, as I'm adding the watercolors. You can see that the colors from this set are really beautiful, really bright and vibrant. I'm right on my project mixing some different greens and yellows just for some variation. And things are, um, I'll get some close up pictures for you at the end and you can really see the dimension that you get with this napkin die cutting technique. I'm so excited about this. I can't wait to try it with lots of different dies because it gives them a totally different look and it's just fun to do. I love uh, having something new like this to sort of breathe new life into, into products and into my craft. It's just fun to try something new. So I'm just painting this on, mixing the colors, if you have little parts like where on the stem of that it sort of buckled or folded a little bit, that is perfectly fine because when everything's dry, it's going to look like it's just part of the technique. 
So for one of the flowers, I did the base and then the really intricate portion of the um, die cutting to layer on top. Now this also comes with like another little piece, which you'll see in a minute. And you can use it as a butterfly or I'm going to layer it as lots of different um, petals on top. There you can see up close some of sort of the puffing that you get when you start adding that water on there. So for this flower, I'm going to paint the base layer and then I'll show you in just a minute what I mean about all the other little uh, petals that we'll be adding on top. And this really gives this flower some gorgeous dimension. But because it's napkins and it's cheap and um, it's not a hard dimension, you can also mail these very easily. So I'm just getting these watercolors on here. Now these are the little pieces. They come with the hydrangea die set. Like I said, you can use them as butterflies, but you can also use them as dimensional petals for the hydrangea. So I'm going to do these in a mix of the blues and the greens. Again, that's just the napkin folded into quarters and then run, put on top of a piece of cardstock then the die on top of all of everything and then run through the die cutting machine and it kind of compresses all those layers together but once you add the water and your paints they start to puff up and expand and you get that dimension. And I decided to go a little bit more blue on here. You can see that the colors from this watercolor set work perfectly and these paint brushes are nice um, I like that the tips stay together really well, um, but they're gentle when you're applying that color to these really fine little pieces. So I did, I think I did about five of these petals to layer on top. Now, if you wanted to use this die um, without doing the napkin technique, you certainly could. You could cut it from colored cardstock, you could color it from cut it from watercolor paper and paint all of these elements in, and I think that would be beautiful as well. Just dropping in a little bit of that green while things are still wet and letting it mix and blend and have some variation. I decided I wanted a little touch more of a turquoise green color to these, so I'm just mixing that in with the blue. They're all still a little bit damp, so those colors will mix together. So now everything is dry and I'm ready to assemble and you can start to see some of that dimension there that you get. And I just had a few pieces, like I said, that were kind of curling up away from that cardstock underneath. So I just added a dab of glue there to those. And I will start putting together the pink flower first. And then this is that layer that just lines up perfectly right on top. Again, like I said, all of these are part of that same die set. I'll glue that down. I had some glue on my finger which pulled up part of that, so probably not be quite as clumsy as me <laughs> when you're putting this together, but you can see that really texture and dimension that you get. Now this ended up being my favorite of the two because I just love the way that the dimension ended up on this between the napkins and cutting all these um, individual petals that are included within the die. So I'm just gluing them right on top of the base, just a touch of glue in the center so that the sides can still pop up. This one I'll kind of slide in there. You can use kind of a needle or a piercing tool to manipulate the pieces. That's what I'm doing here. And then I just have one more to add. Kind 
to slide it in underneath there. There we go. And we're almost done. I don't know, I think I was just all thumbs this day. <laughs> Do you ever have days like that? Where you're just all thumbs while you're making something? This was one of those days for me, so thanks for your patience here as I get this put together. I was really happy with the finished effect. So you can see some of that dimension. I'll get you some really good pictures at the very end of the video too. Now I'm going to work on the rest of the card. So the first thing I'm doing is creating sort of a a faux piece of typed paper, sort of like a faux note here that's going to be coming out of an envelope. So I stamped that with our footnote stamp and then now I'm going to use our exquisite envelope transparent set and the cutout that goes with that. And this, I love this set but I especially love this envelope. So I'm going to stamp this here onto watercolor paper and I am stamping this using Smoky Gray VersaFine ink in a stamp positioning tool that just lets me get a couple of impressions. Then I ran it through my die cutting machine and part of the die cut allows you to cut a slit in the envelope so you can slide whatever you want in there. You can slide flowers, you can slide this sort of faux uh, letter that I've got. There's just so many different ways you can use this. Now I wanted to add some color to this envelope itself to tie into the two flowers that we'll be putting in there. So I'm using that 12 pan watercolor set and just putting down a little bit of paint and then blend, rinsing off my brush and then blending that out with water. And I just love how this brings the envelope to life. So just dropping a dab of that paint in there and then blending it out with the water. Those detail brushes really help with getting right along that very edge of the line. You can see while things are wet, they start to blend out. and I can match right up to the color of the flower because I'm using the same paint set. And again, just blending it out with water and that allows it to lighten up as I go. Now this envelope set does come with the coordinating die. Like I said, you can choose to have it cut the slit in the envelope or not to. It also comes with lots of really beautiful whimsical flowers that you can use to add inside the envelope or coming out. So even though for this card I'm just using the envelope portion itself, I really recommend taking a look at the entire set because there are some really beautiful card designs that you can do with it. Now that I added the pink, I wanted to just add just a little touch of some yellow to warm it up. I have a thing for adding just a little bit of yellow to, um, to projects to warm them up. And this also I think ties into, it's an olive kind of greenish yellow, which I think ties into the yellow and green that I've used on the leaves um, and stems of those dyes. So this is that panel that I stamped with our footnotes and I'm going to just ink this up. I'm using Memento ink in the color of Peanut Brittle. I wanted it to have a little bit of a vintage look to it. So I'm just using a jumbo sponge dauber tool to ink that up and then also to give that same effect to the envelope. So I'm just um, adding that to the envelope too, tying it all together. And you can see there how you can slide that in really fun. Now this is just a piece of cardstock from my stash and I'm adding some Bluebird Make Art Blendable Dye Ink from Wendy Vecchi around the outer edges. This color was just a perfect match for the colors that I used on the hydrangea. Starting off of the edge with an ink blending tool with a foam pad and then working my way on and then picking up the paper and uh, sort of dabbing that ink around the edges to darken it up around the edges. Now this is gouache paint which I find is super awesome for adding white splatters. So if you like to do snow on your winter cards or just add a little bit of freshness to your background, you just wet this down with water. That's just a cheap palette I keep all my gouache paints in and I just wet down the white paint that I had there and using one of the fine brushes to splatter my background with that. And I think it just adds um, some freshness and lightness to that background. 
I wanted to darken up this paper so there was more contrast between the paper and the envelope. So I'm doing that with some rich cocoa memento ink around the edges. And you can see here how things are starting to come together. I'm sort of laying out the overall design. I put a touch of that rich cocoa along the bottom, again, just to tie everything together. So I added my paper down into the envelope and I'm putting some dimensional adhesive between the paper and the envelope and then also on the back of the envelope and I'm putting that onto my card. Just doubling up the back there so everything is even. And I'm going to put a little curl here up at the top just for fun, just for an added dimensional effect. And here are those napkin die cut flowers. You can see once they're dry and everything is put together, I added some pearls to the center of each that they are just so dimensional and so beautiful. I can't wait for you to see the detail pictures up at the very end. I added a sentiment to this and I felt like I just needed more and so I grabbed our Rustic Borders die set and this set is so handy for instances just like this when you just need a little extra something, a little extra detail to finish off the card. So I inked, lightly inked that um, to match the cardstock background and I'm just adding that underneath the sentiment that I added to the card and the card is complete. So here is a closer look at that die cutting with our hydrangeas creative die set using that napkin die cutting technique. I just again love the dimension, love the texture that we get that you get with that. It's perfect with this die set. Very fun and springy and painted with the Arteza watercolors. This is what the finished card looks like. And I'll give you a couple more close-ups of the design. There's that Rustic Borders creative die for the finishing effect. And one more at all the texture and dimension created with that die cutting. I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you're notified of all future uploads. And you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as our website and blog. And here is the supply list. Thanks for watching.